What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are working on my Yamaha R6 once again. So a few weeks ago, I installed brand new sprockets and a new chain for the bike after having the original one on it since the beginning of this bike's life, 25,000 miles later, uh, it needed to be replaced. One thing I didn't quite know about until after doing this upgrade was that the stock front sprocket, the smaller sprocket, has a rubber damper on it. You can kind of tell, you can see how the rubber piece is, and I didn't even think about this, didn't really think much of it. The new one that I have, which you'll see in just a second, doesn't have that. It's just solid metal. So basically what I'm gonna do today is replace it with a brand new one with the rubber damper and talk about the differences between the two sprockets and if you need to have a damper on your smaller sprocket. So with that sprocket cover off, you can see what this one looks like. Nothing against this kit, by the way. This is an awesome kit that I picked up. I know I love the new uh, rear and front sprocket and of course the gold chain. But as you can see, it's just a solid metal piece. There's none of that rubber stuff on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a quick clip real quick. What you're gonna listen for is a higher pitch hum noise. Whenever I'm on the accelerator, you're gonna hear it. Whenever I let off the gas, it goes away. So listen to this. So you probably heard that sound whenever I gave a gas on the bike, you hear just a hum, high pitched noise, uh, kind of interesting sounding, I've never heard that on my bike before, obviously since I've only ever had the stock sprocket, but when I drove this on the highway home after doing this full upgrade, it was a little weird, I didn't know if I didn't install something correctly or what, um, after looking at some forums, learning a little bit more, that's what it was. So we're going to basically swap this out, it's a little challenging uh, given how I have to take things off since I can't actually take apart the chain, um, but we're going to go ahead and swap it out and see if it fixes the issue. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the chain as far as I can so I can actually get this chain off that front sprocket. So with the R6, just loosen these a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the axle so we can actually pull the chain down. And then I'll slowly just tighten these bolts left and right and you can see it slowly working its way in there. And since I don't have a bike stand at my house, the best I can do is just grab these from the underside and one by one, as I move the bike, looks like I can do two at a time. I'm gonna start loosening these sprockets. And then lastly, I need to take this bolt off, which I've noticed is not that tight. So somehow I'm either not torquing it all the way to spec or it's loosening. So what I'm gonna do with this is clean the threads really good and put some Loctite on it because I don't want this to be coming loose while riding. So let's see what happens if I try to pull the chain off from the front. I don't know if there's gonna be enough wiggle room or not. So it looks like I will have to somehow take this off from the back. Hopefully I can loosen it enough. Hey, hey, there we go. All right, so a little work from this back loose sprocket was able to get it just enough. And now I should be able to at least get the teeth off of it. There we go, all right. So there's the sprocket that I've taken off now. As you can see, it's just solid metal. 
Now, part of me was thinking about using the stock sprocket. It doesn't look like it's crazy chewed up or anything compared to this one that's brand new. Um, but given that it has 25,000 miles on it, it's from 2007, I figured with a brand new chain, you know, why risk it for $20? So with that said, the new one now, which is a JT sprocket, brand new, is 20 bucks on Amazon. I'll have this one linked down below. Um, obviously, it's the exact same as the one that I'm taking off. Just so you can see that we now have that rubber damper. So instead of just being solid metal, it has that rubber piece in it, which hopefully will eliminate any of the drivetrain noise. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with this. I just think I prefer to have it quieter. I'd rather just hear my exhaust and the wind. I don't really wanna hear that high pitch hum. Shouldn't be too hard to just now wrap this around the chain and at least get it onto the axle piece. There we go. And as you can see, this rubber piece that's on the new sprocket is gonna get sandwiched really nicely between each chain link, and that's what's gonna be dampened. That's what basically you're hearing. You're hearing the chain hit each tooth as it goes on the metal one, but now with the rubber piece, it's gonna sit tightly and uh, really stay nice and quiet. So now hopefully it's not too hard to get this chain back on the sprocket and back. It's just barely stretched enough to be able to do this. All right, so that is the trick. Loosening that rear sprocket up. Now we got that back and secure. So from here, I'm gonna clean the threads now. That way I can really get these nice so I can actually even have a bolt that doesn't fall off. So I'm just using a little bit of a grease remover, uh, oil remover type of spray with the wire brush. And uh, hopefully that cleans them to where I can not have a loose bolt anymore. It's already getting a lot off of it. And then from here, I don't know how recommended it is to use Loctite, but I feel like it's better than to not use Loctite for a bolt uh, like this. So with that done and this bolt all cleaned up, we can get this one on nicely. So it looks like this bolt is supposed to be around 65 pounds of torque. So hopefully with the Loctite, that actually stays tight this time. And now it's the fun part of getting all these ones now back together as I rotate the bike front and backwards to make it work. And then these rear bolts are gonna be about 35 pounds. So then last on the list, now we're gonna tighten the chain back to where it was. I'll just slowly pull it out from each side. And of course we'll measure the gap. And uh, not too bad of a reinstallation, I guess we can call it. All right, so on to tightening the rear axle bolt. It looks like it's 80 pounds of torque. So we're gonna torque it back to that. Get this thing ready to go. So with the sprocket all swapped now, having a brand new dampened front sprocket on, now let's go for a spin. We'll set up the GoPro once again. Let's see if this made a difference. So then coming back from my test right now with the OEM style back to having a dampened front sprocket, it is noticeably different. Now on camera, you can still hear a little bit of the engine whine or I would say like drivetrain noise. As a rider, I can just barely pick up just a hint of it, but it is definitely like 90% quieter comparing it to just having the metal sprocket. So to answer the question, do you need to have a dampened sprocket? No, it doesn't affect anything. Um, yeah, it technically weighs a little bit more, but obviously I don't think that's really gonna add up to any type of power loss or anything like that. 
that. I think it's just personal preference. If you want to have a little bit more noise, a little bit different type of noise, you know, go for just not having the dampened one. Personally, I like my exhaust sound and just wanting to hear the wind and kind of just me cruising. So I like this setup a little bit better. That rubber area on that small sprocket just keeps the chain, have that rubber tension on it basically to keep it a little bit quieter. So I prefer that. Anyways, I will have that link below along with this whole sprocket and chain kit that I installed. Really happy with it. It's a good uh, bit of maintenance on the bike to get it up and in tip top shape. But there's a quick video for you guys with the R6. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.